Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle a Celestial Vindicator. And these guys are by far one of the most commonly requested. I think that teal armor can be a little daunting at first, but I promise it is one of the easiest things to do. Now I want to give a quick shout out here to AOSShorts.com. That's run by Dan, he's a fellow Kiwi, and the project over there is to get basically everything related to Age of Sigma in one place. So you'll find there Dan's podcast, uh, tournament news, new releases, but the coolest thing to me by far is a lot of the hobby love that you'll find there. There's army showcases, tutorials like this for example, and from now on, when one of these How I Paint Things comes up with an Age of Sigma related uh, topic, you'll be able to find it over there on aosshorts.com as well. So, hi Dan! <laughs> and to everybody who's coming over from that direction, hello to you as well. But without any further ado, let's get into what we've got and what we're going to use for this Celestial Vindicator. Now our first order of business is to get that nice teal colour to serve as the foundation for the Celestial Vindicator's armour. And for that I'm going to use Sotek Green. I started from a blue undercoat, but you could use a white or even a grey. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit more to get this paint on. And you'll see as it goes on, you'll get a little bit of the blue still showing through. So any areas, particularly on the shield, is a good spot to see this. But where you don't get a, a perfect coverage, what you can do is wait about 10 minutes and come on back and do another thin coat over the top. Now I'm using the large, so the extra large base brush and getting it all up in the camera there. <laughs> but all you need to do is just cover over all of the armor. Don't worry if you get it anywhere that's not going to be green later, uh, because of course we're going to paint those details anyway. So up on the shoulder pads, you see I'm not being very careful because we'll do those white in a little bit. Now, once that first coat has had, like I said, 10 or 15 minutes to dry, you do want to go back over and give it a second. You'll be quite impressed, I think, with the difference in the depth of color that you'll get. Now what we're going to do is our highlights. And I've got Skink Blue. This is a dry paint for this. I'm just going to get out a little on my brush and then work most of it into the bristles. If you've not come across dry brushing before, this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> so what you want is to leave very little behind. So if I go ahead and I dry brush here the edge of my base, see if I go over the same spot a few times, I get that nice sharper green edge. And that gives you an idea of what you're going to leave on the miniature. So I've got here a small dry brush and I'm actually going to flip this dude upside down to start with because it's going to be the easiest way to catch just the edges of some of these more prominent armor plates. Now this is a great deal easier <laughs> than trying to you know, individually pick these lines out with a brush, but I think it looks pretty good if you'd spend just a little time going back over carefully and building up that color. So if we look at them now from the front, you see, nice and good. Nice and good, nice and simple. Goodness me. So I'm going to go around now and spend some time just doing this to all of the edges of his armor. You'll find some places, like on his knee pads, for example, because they're a rounded edge, dry brushing doesn't necessarily do you the best there. But concentrating on places that do have a prominent edge, and you'll be all right. Just cruise around now, oops, and we will see what we've got when we come back. Now, after a couple of passes of skink blue, this is what we've got. And you'll see how dry brushing helps us pick out the very edges of things, while at the same time leaving deeper color in the recesses. Now, one of the potential downsides you'll see here on his knee pad, for example, or back around on his calves, any sort of rounded area can sometimes spoil the effect a little, but that's okay, because what we're going to do now is going to help mitigate some of that. I've got Coelia Green Shade, and just an ordinary shade brush. You can use any old brush you like for this, but I tend to think bigger is better. <laughs> and what we're going to do is just put the shade over all of the armor, and you'll see straight away what it does. It's going to run into the recesses and give us nice deep shading anywhere it sort of collects. But at the same time, it will tend to run away from the high points and leave that nice uh, highlight intact. So here's where he starts looking a little bit more serious. What you need to do is go around the whole model, just filling in all of these armored areas with Coelia green shade. And you can use this straight from the pot. So take your time, 
Then you want to live this, live this, leave this. Goodness me, I can't talk today. <laughs> leave this for about half an hour to dry. Okay, you really want to make sure this has plenty of time to settle and uh, and dry up, so you can paint over the top of it later. Now, once that shade is dried, you can see how much it does for our armor, particularly around the areas that I mentioned, which were a little bit uh, chalky. They've smoothed that out, and it now looks ah oh, much nicer. We've got real depth to the armor, and our highlight is still intact. So there you got the, the sort of benefit of going for dry brushing. <laughs> nice and easy. What I've got now is a little bit of Celestra Gray, and just a little bit of water, you know, just sort of a brushful, shall we say, just to smooth that out. Now you might find if, you're, if your paint is too thin, you'll notice when you put it on, because it won't cover it all. What we're doing now is we'll get into these shoulder pads and we'll probably need to do two thin coats of Celestra Grey as the base coat for our white. Just be careful when you come near anything that you've already painted that you want to stay blue. But these trims, for example, these are going to be gold, so we're going to paint those anyway. Now you may find it takes two or even three coats to get a nice smooth uh, Celestra Grey finish over a dark color. But it is important because what comes next is a lighter version of the same. We're going to do exactly the same thing again, but we're going to use Ulthuan Grey this time. And what we'll do, just a little bit of water in my brush and start doing the same thing. Go over those areas and light them up a little bit more. Now Ulthuan Grey is not white. It's just off. It's got a little bit of a bluish tinge to it. But for our purposes, when we put it around all of this deep bluey green, it will look white. Okay, so all you got to do now, one, maybe two coats, and finish off the shoulder pads. Now that stage is not really difficult, but it is time consuming, because you're looking at about five or even six coats of paint there to make that a nice, smooth, crisp, white finish. What I've got now, though, is my lead belcher, and we're just going to go around, fill in all of the metal areas. You may find in a lot of places you can do this in one coat, but anywhere that it looks like it could be a little smoother, just wait for it to dry and again. Second thin coat is always going to be better than one big thick one that obscures detail. Now we've got some silver on, and you'll see I've been pretty careless when it comes to these little nodules on the front of his uh, tabard thingy there, because it's not going to matter. We're going to cover over those in red in a little minute as well. Now what we're going to do is our Retributor Armor, and we're going to do all of the gold. Now any areas that you get you know, you go a little bit bonk, you can just get some Sotek green and, you know, just paint them in again. Okay, it won't matter too much by the time we've finished. But if I just open my pot properly again, <laughs> same as always, you do want just a fraction of water in your paint to help it flow off your brush. And start going around. Let's start on the shoulder pads, actually, so that shows a bit better. Just go around and fill in all the gold areas that you're going to want to see. You will find in some areas that you're going to need to do two thin coats. So take your time now and have some fun with this. Now we're starting to come together. <laughs> now it's worth pointing out, there is a bit here, like on the back of a shield. There we go, you might be able to see it from that direction. You see on the inside edge, now normally I've seen that done gold. Um, I am going to skip it because, I mean, for the purposes of our demonstration, it's not that important. But if you want to be you know, correct, I guess, with our fictional toy soldiers. <laughs> that bit should be in gold as well, but that's up to you. Now I've got here my Mephiston red, and let's just paint in these red areas. So these little leathery bits at the front of his armor here. Now if I do end up going over any of these little metal bits that I've already prepared, it's nothing for me to go back, grab some lead belcher again, and touch them up. So don't worry too much about how you're going to get this paint on. Just don't forget, you can see it from the back as well, if <laughs> that needs to be red too. So let's get in there, finish off these red details. Now we're going to use just a little bit of Screamer Pink to lay down the base coat for his weapon hafts. And if you've got a, a Liberator Prime or any sort of leader who's got a plume, you can paint it in with this now as well. Then finally for his base coats, grab yourself some black. Now I'm using a Vallejo black paint here because I like the coverage it gives me. But you can use a bad and black if that's what you happen to have. It's literally just black paint, <laughs> whatever you like to use. So any of these uh, black leather areas, so his belt, for example, 
the gaps between his uh, between his armor. Let's get in there now and fill these in with black. All right, so it's some of these areas, for example, these are pretty easy to reach. Uh, take your time. Now, with the last of our base coats finished, we're going to use some more shades. Now, we saw what Coelia Green Shade did, <laughs> so we're going to do that over the rest of those base coats. I've got here Reichland Flesh Shade, and I'm going to use something akin to a, a medium layer brush. I want a fair amount of control where this goes. And I'm going to use Reichland Flesh Shade over all of the gold areas. And you'll see what we get straight away is this nice, warm, rosy kind of gold, and I think it's quite nice. Some people like to use Agrax Earth Shade, and that will give you a deeper, more sort of burnished, like it's seen some action. You might like that look better. But all I'm going to do now is just calmly go around, carefully putting my Reichland Flesh Shade on all of the gold. All right. Take your time, and then again, leave it for about 10-20 minutes to dry properly. Now, while that's drying, if you're careful, you can get the Nuln Oil and do the same thing while that Reichland Flesh Shade is drying. So, let's go all over the red and all of the metal details too, just to add a bit more depth there. If you find that you have too much shade settling in one place, it looks like it's going to be really clodgy, you can just use your brush to draw it away and move it somewhere else. Now, once those shades have had plenty of time to dry, you'll see it does the same thing and gives us plenty of depth and all of the recesses of the, of the detail. But it does leave things a little dark, especially on our gold, which tends to go a little bit orange. Now, there are lots of ways that you can bring this back up, but what I'm going to do is grab my medium layer brush and just a little bit of Retributor Armor again. Now, some folks like to do uh, a brighter gold, like Auric Armor Gold or what have you. But all I'm doing is just carefully going along the edges of that Retributor Armor detail again. And the shield is probably the easiest place. Let's get a little closer here. If I get just a little bit of water in my brush so that my paint flows, there we go, and then just along some of these broader, flatter areas. So leaving behind that nice rosy color in the recesses, but just bringing up the gold making it shine a little again. Now you can do as much of this as you like. You might even like to leave uh, some of the, you know, the deeper recesses completely alone. But I like to bring this gold up just a bit again. Now I've got some Waz Decker Red and a smaller brush this time because we want a fair bit of control. So grab yourself a small layer brush and let's get onto this red. The idea here is you want to paint these lines just along the edges of any sort of creases in the leather. So not just the edges, say, of a single strip, but in the center, too, where you'll notice that it folds over itself. Along the tabard here, for example, you can use the edgier brush to very quickly get a, a highlighting effect on that. But just take your time now. This is not too difficult, this uh, little bit on the front here. Now, there are some areas of metal that we're going to use the same technique to highlight. So I've got myself some Runefang Steel. You might want to use Stormhost Silver or something, but that's up to you. All I'm going to do is, with my same smaller brush here, just pick out some of the edges and brighten this metal up a bit. Same too with these little knobblies on the front here. But when we start getting to some of these bigger areas, like for example along this hammer and what have you, we can highlight it, you know, slowly, painstakingly. But what if there were an easier way? And if I were to tell you, would you believe me? <laughs> I've got here Necron Compound. This is a nice silver dry brush color. And my small dry brush from earlier. And we're going to prep it up in the same way. As usual, we're just going to quickly dry brush the edge of the base. See how much we'll leave behind. And then you can do the same as we did with his armor. Just dry brushing the metal to lightly bring out the edges of that detail. Now that's all well and good. You know, that looks pretty cool. But... Check this out. Gold also works with a nice, sharp silver edge. So what I'm going to do, I might need a little more paint there actually, is very carefully along some of these details, just where I want the extreme edge to catch the light, is just a little bit of Necron compound, rather than mucking around with the small brush. 
You do want to be very careful with this because it will quite quickly overpower gold. And of course, we're getting close to stuff that we've already painted in a lot of cases. So take your time and you may decide you don't really want this last step, but that's up to you. I quite like how it looks. And with a bit of practice, you'll find you can get some of these areas without putting anything else in danger. So now with that gold finished off like that, our Celestial Vindicator is complete. But there is one more step that you can choose to do. This one is completely optional. And if you're just getting started, I'd probably recommend stick with this one just for your primes and stuff like that, where you really want them to look a bit more shiny. I've got here some Temple Guard Blue and my little detail brush. All I'm gonna do is very lightly on the extreme edges of just a couple of areas of color, just paint those lines in to make those details a little bit sharper. Now you can use the dry brush here as a guide. You know, wherever that color has caught, there's gonna naturally be a place where the light might catch as well. So you can put on as little or as much of this as you like. Any sort of really big areas, like his knee pads, for example, they're quite easy to do. But I, like I said, I would recommend, ooh, that's a bit much. And just a bit of water and we can flush that off. You see, you can fix a problem <laughs> if you're acting quick. But like I said, this is, a, this is a purely optional step. And if you don't want to, if you kind of like what you've got so far, or you know, you're not confident quite yet in doing something like this, this edge highlighting, don't worry too much about it. Your fellow's gonna look fantastic either way. Then last off with a really simple base, our Celestial Vindicator is complete, and I'm really pleased with how this dude turned out. I think if you wanted to take it a little further, that Temple Guard blue around the edges is quite nice. You can even do white on his shoulder pads if you wanted to get really fancy. <laughs> but I think for the purposes of getting a dude on the table, that's not too difficult. The white is a little time consuming, but that's up to you. You know, if you're, if you're picking Celestial Vindicators, you know what you're getting into. <laughs> but this was a lot of fun. Uh, that teal armor in particular, I think, popped off really well. So I'm quite pleased with the results there. So again, I want to say a quick shout out to Dan at AOSShorts.com. You'll be seeing this one here shortly as well. And to everybody who's popped along to have a look at these things, you know, a big thank you. I hope that this does help you out in some way. As always, you can drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So as ever, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.